Page 27, Flight of the Swans. On pages 24, 25, and 26, they present some things, and I don't really teach everything, so I'll just briefly, let's just cover a few little things. On page 24, they're talking about how to write a melody or writing a melody or something to do with a melody. I don't teach any of that. I don't teach composition or how to write a melody or any of that. I'm sure there's plenty of videos available if you're interested in composition, how to compose. You have fun with it. Other than that, I really don't have anything more to say on writing a melody. On page 25, they're talking about the minor scale pattern. Remember, for major scale, there's a set pattern of whole steps and half steps, or as they say in this book, tones and semitones. Well, minor scales have a pattern too. It's different than a major, obviously, but it's a set pattern. And they show it there, sort of in the middle of the page. I'm going to see C major. We use C major for the major scales because it only uses the white keys, and it's easy to see the pattern. Well, same thing for minor keys. I'm going to use A minor because, like C major, it only uses the white keys, and we can see the pattern. So we have the pattern of whole steps and half steps, or tones and semitones. I'm going to say whole step and half step is what I'm used to. The book says tone and semitone. But the pattern simply is, look at the keyboard, it's a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole step, half step, whole step whole step. So it's a whole half, whole whole half, whole whole. That's the pattern. You can start on any key, white or black on the keyboard, doesn't matter. If you use that pattern, you will get a minor scale. Guaranteed. It works every time. Take it to the back, it works. Now there's different kinds of minor scales. The one I'm talking about here is called the natural minor. It just It's the natural way it works according to the key signature. Nothing's altered. The one they teach in the book and the one I cover in my scale videos is called the harmonic minor. Well, harmonic is simple enough. As you remember, I said that in a scale, each note in the scale is numbered. They're not step numbers or whatever. We simply take the seventh step and we take it up a half a step or a, a semitone. So in here, seventh step is G. So we simply take that up to G sharp. Here. That is the harmonic minor. A minor. A harmonic minor. Sounds cool. That's what, and that's what we typically use and practice in, in music. Now that's pages 25. Don't have a lot more to say on that. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. On page 26, they give that chart, time chart again, because the piece on page 27 is from the Romantic period. It's by Tchaikovsky. You can go read all about him and the ballet Swan Lake, which is this melody is from. So let's talk about this Swan Lake thingamajigger, this swans thing. Common time or 4-4 four, four time. No sharps or flats, and your first inclination there is, okay, it's C major, because that's no sharps or flats. But now that we're involving minors, you also have to consider, well, is it the relative minor? Because it could be. And in this case, just look at the last measure. You have an A, and down here is an A and an E. That's A minor. That's an A minor chord. We're not using the C, but it's there. So this happens to be an A minor Think about that too. The good idea at this point, I think, to go ahead and do my scale video on A minor, the beginner portion. One octave up and down, learn the fingering, learn the notes. So, right hand at the beginning. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Watch this fingering in the third measure. They want the fourth finger on the C. You just stay there. And then lift. You can reach up or lift up to the, put the fourth finger on the D. Don't really have to. You could use here. But you need fifth finger on the E on the next line. 
So whether you use fourth finger on that D, the last three notes in the first line, fourth finger or fifth finger, it's up to you, but on the next line, you need a little finger on that E. And you're back to doing what you were doing first. Third line, you have the chords. Down here, it's a D, an F, and a G. And the next measure, and the next measure, and now some accidentals, oh goody. D sharp, F sharp, two, three, and then an E, G sharp, one, four. This is very common fingering. So, yeah, I, I encourage that. And then lift up and go up. And thumb on the D. And then the next line, it is a two on the F. And again, a two on the G. We keep going up the keyboard. D, B flat, and then reach down. And then B natural. And the last line is fifth finger again. And you're back to what you were at the beginning. Left hand at the beginning. This, these notes, that's an A minor chord. It's extended position, but fourth finger on the C. One and two and. And I would recommend a three, two, one for the, the D, this chord. Because in the next measure, you got to go back down again. Now, if we didn't have to go back down again, here, then we could collapse and do that. But because in the next measure, we, we need this, we got to go back down here, then I'm recommending this finger. So we stay in this position. A little easier is all. Then the second measure is again. You can collapse. Quarter rest, fourth finger. They want fourth finger. That's up to you. I don't care. I mean, this could be fourth finger. But you're in this position, you could do fifth finger. Because you got a quarter rest to get back down here where you were. Again. Then in the second line, last measure, come down. And follow their fingering. They're saying use third finger. You're going to lift up. Lift up again. Not crazy about that fingering, but we'll use it. It's fine. It's a sequence going up, and we get to use the same fingering on each one. So, okay. And then the last measure of the chords. That is an F, G, B for that last chord. And then here. Fourth line, second measure, here, and then here, it's an E flat, and then down, 4 2 1 or 5 3 1, either one, it's up to you. And then the last measure, F sharp, A, B, and then an E, G sharp, B, and the last line, way up here, just go ahead and move it now. You're coming from the last chord in the in the next to the last line is here. The first chord in the last line is here. If you if you want, you can just simply move and use the same fingers again. I don't recommend it, but you can. Or we can do the first chord in the last line with three, two, one. Because it's a little, our hand doesn't have to move as far. And then for the second chord, do five, three, one. So we're taking uh, an intermediate hand position to get us from where we were to where we need to be. And, and so the it's here to here to here. And you stay in this position because that's the third chord in the last line is an A D F to the A chord, and now they're saying thumb, there's other possibilities, just go, saying fifth finger, fourth finger, fifth finger works too, and then come down. 
So work it out very slowly and carefully, one hand at a time, to get the rhythm and the fingering. Just work that part out. And once you have it, try putting the hands together and see what happens. One and two. measure the first line. Be careful on these and try and get this accurate. The first beat is this. Then the second beat, the left hand comes in. Third beat, you're going to play the D. But when you play the C, the left hand comes up. Right there. The left hand up. Because it has a rest. So it's... You get that up. Let's go to the second line, third measure. You're here. It's the same fingering as the first line. And the last beat, you have a rest in the right hand. So when you play the A, lift that up. Right there. And then that gives you a chance to move your hand down. play the rests. That is be quiet. Mm -hmm. So on the third line last measure, the left hand, play those rests. So you're here. Now you hold it. This is weird here. Just check your notes. Make sure you got them. do a 5-2 for the last note on the left hand. You can do a 5-1 if you want. Then once you have the notes and the fingering sort of working, see if maybe you put in the, the uh, phrasing. Because this the phrasing is so important in any piece, but this piece. And it's different for the different hands. So you make sure we're getting it at the beginning. There, but the, left, the right hand is legato. hand it's a new phrase and the, at the end of the first line lift up those last three notes is a new phrase just up just slightly and so watch this phrasing very carefully in the third line down we're here The fingering helps us here because we have to lift up to move. And then lift up there. Lift up. Lift up. Lift up. This is why we can get away with this from the end of the fourth line to the next line because it's between phrases we're lifting up and so forth. So watch the phrasing, put that in, and then maybe we can add the dynamics. Medium soft, the, the dynamics go to the melody and the melody is kind of going back and forth between the hands so watch out. So decide what medium soft is for you here and then make the other everything else softer. Keep it all medium soft until you get to the end of the second line. And you, you, you're going up to a 
it's a little misleading. You see, the left hand has been soft, and they give you a P there, they don't need to. You know it's soft anyway. And now they're telling you at the end of the line, the left hand can get, get a little crescendo, get a little louder, because it's going to go to medium soft, because it gets the melody where the right hand now has to be soft. All of that is unimportant. All of that doesn't even need to be there. You should know that just by knowing how to handle dynamics. If the right hand is medium soft and that's the melody at the beginning, then in the third line when the left hand gets it, the left hand automatically becomes the medium soft because that's what the melody was and there's nothing to tell you anything different. So the crescendo there is a felt crescendo. It's not an, really an intense note. And because now the left hand takes over and the right hand has to be soft. Don't get loud here. This is just sort of soft. Now in the third measure you're going to start getting a little louder but not much. There. That's the loudest part and it might be almost a medium loud. You can, you can, I mean you started out medium soft. You gotta go somewhere. And then back down to medium soft. Now they're giving you these little crescendos here. Come up here. In my opinion, you don't need that. You can feel that. Now we're up to medium loud in the right hand. And at the beginning of the last line, we're loud. Don't get loud before then. That's the right hand. The left hand, keep it down to a sort of a medium soft, maybe a medium loud. Now, you're sort of medium soft. They're saying medium soft would be for the left hand. And the right hand, it's come down, start this medium loud, and go down to a soft. slower. It's sort of an afterthought. So it's here. And then there's soft and very soft at the end. And then you hang on to that for a little while until you're tired of hearing it. Everybody claps because they think it's just wonderful and blah blah blah. Okay. When I do this with a metronome I'm just going to hold that half note in the left hand down four counts instead of two and that's it. Get to know the piece. You get the fingering and all that working for you, and the phrasing is working, and you're experimenting with the dynamics. Really, the dynamics come in when you get to know the piece and you can feel the music. You will feel this dynamic. Because even at the beginning, the first two lines, it just gives you a medium soft. You're not going to stay medium soft for the whole thing. You're going to get a little louder and a little softer as you feel it. And that's the melody. The left hand can stay soft throughout the whole thing. The left hand is just supporting. It's the melody that's got to... Oh, yeah, we do all this wonderful stuff, huh? Now, the speed of this is, is, they say, Andante. Now, you find recordings of this, you get an idea how fast it goes. Andante is a nice, leisurely stroll. It's not slow. It's slower than moderato. It's just a nice, easy... Blah, blah. Somewhere in there, it's a range. You have to experiment with it. Don't play it fast and don't play it slow. Blah blah blah. Then at the end of the fourth line, there's a rollantondo there where you'd slow down, where you're building up. You're slowing down a little bit and building up, and, and then at the last line where you're allowed the climax of the piece, all tempo means go back to what you were going before you slow down. This piece, it's a little out of character to get really, really loud. I mean, yeah, the orchestra really kind of gets loud, but I, in my opinion, I would not get really loud on this. Don't get carried away with the excitement here. Uh, it's, it's still a bunch of swans doing their things. Okay. Now let's go ahead and try this together slowly. I'll give us four counts. I'm not going to do the dynamics. I'm not going to slow down or 
speed up or any of that. I'm just doing notes and rhythms and the phrasing. We want to check all that first. And you can add all that other stuff later on. One and two and ready and go and one and two and Hold and two and off.